Hey guys, we are back with some more New Jersey Devils franchise mode, and there are a few things left that we have to do in this offseason. In the last one, we went through uh, part of the off, most of the offseason actually, but we still have a couple of things to do. Here, we have to sign a couple of coaches, our assistant coach and a goalie coach. Our previous assistant and goalie coaches walked in the last one. So here we are going to sign Jabert Rayom. He's got that A- minus for teaching, and... He has Roll 3 Lions, which is what Patty Marlowe has as our head coach. So maybe he'll have some chemistry with Marlowe. So we are going to sign him to a contract to be our assistant coach. We will give him 700 k for three years. And as our goalie coach, we are going to sign Marvin Nakamura. He's got that B for teaching, but he does have a balanced approach. And he fits our team 62%, so that's pretty good. He doesn't fit Hughes too much, but... He's not really going to be working with Hughes too much anyway as the goalie coach. So I figure why not sign him on as the goalie coach. And we will give him uh, about 600 k for three years. Not four years, three years of that to him. And we also need a goalie coach for the AHL. So that'll obviously be pretty easy to find as they are. there's a an abundance of them. So we will give Adele Lacerte here a $300,000 contract for four years. And now the main move of the day. We are going to be trading with the San Jose Sharks as there was support to get Eric Carlson in the comments of the last video. Now we are going to have to retain some salary. This is not going to work without doing that. We are going to retain, or we're going to ask the Sharks to retain three mil of Eric Carlson's salary, and as a result of that, we're going to have to throw something additional in there that they didn't want in the last one. So first of all, in the last episode, when we asked them what they wanted for Carlson, they said bellows, a first, and a second. So I will give them bellows, and I will give them a first as well, and it will be next year's first in 2028. And we also need to unload Michael Vukojevic, so that is what we will do here. We will include him in this deal as well. So Bellows, Vukojevic, and a first for Carlson. The reason we're doing the first as opposed to a second is because they are retaining salary. As we see here, if we remove the first and we ask them, hey, what about our second for next year? That's not going to work. Proposed trade, trade rejected. So as a result of that, we are going to be using our first round pick for next year in this trade. So Bellows, Vukojevic, and a first for Eric Carlson for one year. I am worried that Carlson may drop off a little bit just because of his age. But then again, he shouldn't because of his production level. He has been able to maintain 60 to 70 points per season over the last four seasons. And then even before that, 80 points, almost 100 points there in year number two, I believe that was. 98 points in 80 wedding games played. He's still got it at 36 years of age. So hopefully he's, he'll continue to have it for at least one more year while we have him to make another run. So Bellows, Vukojevic, and a first for Carlson. And it makes sense to send them Vukojevic as well. He wants a lot of money, but they have a lot of cap space on that team. They have $72 million in salary currently. So that would mean they have probably like, yeah, they, as you see on this screen, $20 million in cap available. I think they can afford to sign Vukojevic. And as well as really anyone else they would need. And it does look like they need a young defenseman here. As they do have Carlson who they're trading us. And then they have Merkley. But then not really anybody after that. So they could use Vukojevic as a nice building piece for the future. Uh, for, and for the present obviously he's 25 years of age. And Bellows he adds to their forward depth. And they get a first round pick out of it. So proposed trade. Trade accepted. There you go. And now in order to replace... Kiefer Bellows, we're going to have to sign someone out of free agency, and that would be the center, Colton Sissons. He is an 81 overall and wants 2.25 million. He had a pretty decent amount of points last season. He had 37 points with Philadelphia. He's really good on faceoffs for the most part. I, as a matter of fact, I can't find anything under a 50% in the simulation, and he, he was pretty physical last year with Philadelphia. He didn't have the greatest takeaway to giveaway ratio, but historically he is pretty good with it as he had a 55 to 36 there in this year 2022 2023. 
as well as in the 2021-22 season, he had 61-50. to So I'm pretty hopeful that he'll be able to get it back up to uh, where he has previously had it. So we will sign him to a one-year deal at $2.5 million, the same amount as Keeper Bells was making. And on the exact same term. So the only thing that's happening here is we're downgrading from Bellows to Sissons, but we're upgrading on defense massively from Vukovic to Eric Carlson. So I think that was very much worth it. As long as we can make Stanley Cup number five happen with Eric Carlson on the team, I'd say that was a pretty decent trade. And we also, of course, have to hope that Sissons signs, but I, I think he should given that we gave him a pretty decent offer, and he's not the best free agent on the market currently, so he should end up signing with us. So we will see what happens over the next few days. There is Rayom. He is joining on as our assistant coach. There's Lacerte. She is joining on as our AHL goalie coach. And there's Nakamura. He is joining on as our NHL goalie coach. And there is Colton Sissons as well. So I believe we have signed everybody that we need to sign, including coaching staff. I don't think we have to sign any new scouts, I'll double check that really quick off screen, but I believe we are set. So as we take a look at our roster one more time, now with Carlson on it, you have Grubauer and Wingles. So interesting thing is that Wingles has actually dropped back down to an 81. Hopefully he sees some growth over the offseason jump. Defenseman, you have Carlson, Fabro, Slavin, Severson, Nurse, Lankow, and then in the system, Frolov. So it's going to be interesting as well to see how much Lankow and Frolov are able to grow. Because I definitely want one of them, at least one of them, playing on the roster next year, if not both. And then you have Hall, Hughes, Heischer, Bratt, Bajan, Bokvist, Lundell, Prospel, Bykov, Benson, Sissons, Zaka, and then Clark and Zetterland as backups. And then you also have Solani and Studenich in the minors. Oh, then, all right, Pushgrev. Pushgrev isn't really growing here, so we will offer him out to the league and just see what we could get from here. And no trades found. <laughs> wow. All right, so I think we are going to have to simply just look for our trade ourselves, the, do it the old-fashioned way. Yep, no team wants Pushkarev. <laughs> Understandable. So I think here we're just going to send him to a team that looks like they may need him at forward, so a team that doesn't have a whole lot of forward depth, that he may have a chance at cracking the roster. So maybe the Islanders would be able to take him. They, they have a lot of 70s in there, some old guys as well. They're also a rebuilder. And they could definitely afford him. They have $39 million in cap space available. So we'll just take, for Pushkarev, we will just take, I think, a third for next year. Yeah, that should work. I mean, that'll definitely go through. And we'll get a fourth for this year on there as well. So a third and a fourth for Pushkarev. Proposed trade. Trade accepted. They made out like gangbusters. I mean, it was a dicey situation with Pushkarev there because he wasn't really growing and no team wanted him. So... Figured we may as well just get a couple of draft picks back for him. Obviously, that looks lopsided uh, according to the game, but really, I don't think so, given that Pushkarev probably won't grow at this point. Because usually, if the low elites take a while to grow, then they aren't going to grow. So now, at this point, we are set to move into next season. There's no scouts that I want to sign because all the ones on the market currently are terrible. So we will just move into the start of the preseason. And we have a trade to Columbus. Wenberg is going back to Columbus along with a fourth round pick for next year's draft. And then a 2027 first to Minnesota and D. Gordon. So new numbers here. First of all, Jack Hughes has a second alternate captain as Palmieri had it before. But now, obviously, we don't have Palmieri, so Hughes has the second alternate along with Heischer, and then Hall is the captain still. Sissons has number 11, Prospel with number 81, I believe we saw that before on his player profile. Uh, Benson with number 17, Zetterlin 36, Frolov with number 6, Lankow 79, Carlson of course number 65, and Wingles number 35. So Wingles has grown to an 83 overall, and Grubauer has also dropped to an 83. So it's going to be interesting between these two this season for sure, and we'll see who ends up playing more games at the end of the season. Carlson only dropped to an 88, so he should definitely still be able to put up a lot of points there. Unfortunately, he doesn't fit in with our shoot cycle bias but you know he's still Eric Carlson so he should he should still end up getting at least 50 to 60 points even though it looks like the system doesn't fit him too well Dante Fabro at an 86 same for Slavin Severson and Nurse at 83s and the Lanko and Frolov only jumped up to a 79 
for both of them. Looks like they're both slow growers there, especially Lankow. He's only grown, I believe, one overall per offseason. He, he went from a 77 to a 78 to a 79, so we will definitely have to keep an eye on both of them. So for forwards, you have Hughes, Hall, Heischer, ba- Brat, Bajan, Bokvist, Prospel, Lundell, Bykov's up to an 83, so he's definitely a third liner at this point, which is good because I have him on the third line anyway. Sissons, Zaka, Benson, Zetterland, and then Clark should be in the minors. So here are the lines. We have Bokvist, Hughes, and Hall, Bajan, Heischer, and Brat, Bykov, Lundell, and Prospel, and then Benson, Zaka, and Sissons. On defense, you have Slavin and Carlson, Nurse and Fabro, Lankow and Severson. So for right now, Frolov is being scratched. We'll see how Severson declines over the year. If he ends up declining to an 82 or an 81 by, let's say, November, then we'll probably end up trading him. And then we'll start playing Frolov. Or if we just start struggling, then we'll have to trade Severson. And then we'll start playing Frolov. Or for injuries or whatever reason... We'll definitely be playing for Olav at some point this season, though. And as for Zetterland, he'll just be an injury replacement player at forward. Power play, you have Hall, Hughes, Prospel, Bajin, and Carlson. And then on the second unit, Bokvist, Tisher, Brat, Bykov, and Severson. And on the format power play, Hughes, Hall, Slavin, and Carlson. Tisher, Brat, Bokvist, and Severson. Penalty kill, you have Lundell, Prospel, Nurse, and Fabro. And then Tisher, Bajin, Slavin, and Severson. Three-man penalty kill is basically the same without the wingers. Four-on-four, Hughes, Hall, Slavin, and Carlson. Heischer, Brat, Nurse, and Fabro. And the four-on-four continued. Bogfist, Bajan, Lankow, and Severson. Three-on-three, Hughes, Hall, Carlson. Heischer, Brat, Slavin, Bogfist, Bajan, and Fabro. And the extra attackers, Hughes and Heischer. The shootout, Hughes, Hall, Heischer, Carlson, and Brat. In goal, of course, he got Wingles and Grubauer. And for right now, we are going to leave Mikhail Rotsitis in Germany, I believe is where he is. Uh, yeah, DEL. So we'll leave him there for right now, as I want to see how he does in his plus one season in the DEL. And here, since our AHL team is looking a little eh for forwards... Besides Clark, Solani, and Studenich, of course, we will sign Leclerc and Brewer because they are currently, I believe, yes, yeah, seven and eight on the depth chart for the AHL. So Leclerc, well, actually, Leclerc, yeah, Leclerc would stay in juniors. So that is going to be a no for him. Brewer, however, we will sign as he is in the USA. So we will offer him a contract. And then Bolesky, yeah, sure, we'll sign Joshua Bolesky as well. Uh, Esteban Dubnik, we will sign for the AHL as well. So that is one, two, three. That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten forwards signed for the AHL. So we just still need two more here. We will sign Lutzer. He is currently in Europe. So we will give him a contract to come over to North America. And Richter, he is in juniors. Uh, Kapitanov, perfect. So we will sign Kapitanov as well. And we also only have five defensemen signed as well. So once again, we're not going to sign Rodsidis. He is staying in Europe, but we will sign uh, Bhutan. Bhutan, I guess, is in. Yeah, he's in juniors. So is Warner. So is Cones. So is Schwinnard. So is Chung. Uh, Blair. Uh, I guess so. He's a 48 overall, but I, I suppose we'll sign him. And we are also going to sign Tristan Parks, our high elite goaltender. He's a 73 overall. I believe that is a huge jump from when we drafted him. I think he was a 59 or a 60 overall when we drafted him. And it's only been a couple of years. So we will definitely sign Tristan Parks there. Actually, you know what? I think instead of Severson, I want to start Frolov so that we can see what he's about instead of sitting him for the first part of the season. Because it will be easier, at least for me, to get him in the lineup at the beginning of the season when we have a clean slate as opposed to you know halfway through the season if we're by chance just barely in a playoff position and then you can't really afford to get Frolov in there over Severson we're going to start Frolov so as a result that means we're going to have to get someone else in there on the point for the power play so that may as well be Fabro so we have simmed through the preseason and now we have The first game of the season versus the Nashville Predators. And you know what we're going to do that we haven't done in a while? We will do a commentary third period. So here we go. We are in the third period of our home opener against the Nashville Predators. And oh boy, during the first and second period, 
Nashville really let us have it. Goals by Burakovsky, Duchesne, Aston Reese, and Bracco before we scored from Nurse. So here we go. Carlson from Hall, and he scores right off the rush, off the feed from Eric Carlson, the newest New Jersey Devil. And we are on the board, and we are just two down now. Taylor Hall with his first of the season off a beautiful pass from Eric Carlson. As a, that was a backhand pass right to Taylor Hall as he one-times that pass, Corpusalo. And we are back in this game. Bocas, Hughes, and Hall out there against Tolvanen, Granlund, and Forsberg. Face-off taken by Forsberg, but Bocas will take it back for New Jersey. And back to Slavin. Slavin for Carlson. Over to Hall. Hall. For Boquist, Boquist with the laser shot that went just wide. And Nashville will take it back, but Hughes gets it back from Boquist as Hall takes a backhand shot on Corpusalo, but he is not having any of that. Second line's out there now. Bajin, Hesher, and Brat against Firk, Duchesne, and Burakovsky. Valakat takes it for Nashville. He gets it to number 91 on Nashville. Firk, I believe that is. Firk with the shot and save by Grubauer. He takes no chances. Second lines are still out there. Nico on the draw against Duchesne, and he sure will win it. Back to Grubauer, but Nurse will cough it up to Firk. Firk tried to get it to his teammate, but Brat picks it up instead. Beijing into the offensive zone. Beijing taking his time. Tried to wind it around the boards to Brat, and did. Nurse with the shot, but it was blocked by a Nashville Predator, and he will have to regroup as he was being chased by number 65 on Nashville. Beijing... For your New Jersey Devils, as Duchesne is leveled out by Nico Heischer, number 13. And, oh my, that was a broken play. If I ever seen it for the Nashville Predators there. Prosper for Fabro. For Bykov to Nurse. Fabro and Nurse play catch a little bit. And, oh my, Clayson had it on the goal line pretty much. is It looked like it was going to go in, but he, he took matters into his own hands. And he made sure that puck did not go in his net. And that, that could be a game saver potentially for Nashville here. As Clayson will take it back for Nashville. For Hervery, for Likachev. Likachev into the New Jersey zone. Finds for Hervery. For Nelson, I believe that is. Taken by Prospel, who dumps in. 6.15 left in the third period. Nashville still up by two. As Likachev gets it from his teammate. And from Hervery. With the pass and the shot. That was a great save by Grubauer. Likachev. With a shot from the point. Blocked by his own teammate. Granlund, I believe that is. Zaka takes it for the Devils. And he finds Sissons on his way. Sissons with the shot that just went wide. Tolvanen. Hooked by Zaka, I believe it is. But no penalty call. Tolvanen. Tries to get past... Number 25 on New Jersey, but cannot. He has to go around instead. Granlund for Forsberg with the backhand shot that looked like it went through Grubauer's pads, but luckily it went wide. Gabranson for Forsberg for Granlund again, and oh my goodness, that is a great save by Grubauer. 55 seconds left. Grubauer to the bench. Number 11, Sissons for Frolov. Number 6 with the shot, and Forsberg will take it for Nashville. Tolvanen. Tries to get it out. He's pressured by two Devils. Cannot. Sissons. Fourth line still out there with 38 seconds to go. Good job, coach. Lanko for Frolov. Oh, my goodness. Shot block. Carlson with the shot. And Boquist has it now. For Frolov. Sissons. Back over to Frolov on the point. Frolov with the shot from the point. And we have a penalty against Nashville with 24 seconds remaining. So here we go. The first line power play finally out there. Hall, Hughes, Prospel. Carlson and Heischer is out there as the extra attacker. I did not see who the other point guy was. I believe that is Beijing, number five. 17 seconds remaining. Hall tried to get, get that pass up, but could not as Nashville, a Nashville player was there to deflect it. Hall with nine seconds remaining for Hughes. Hughes with the shot, and that is a good save by Corpusalo. Beijing tried to get it on that, could not, and that will do it. 
So after the month of October, we are 6-5 and five on the season, and we've had a weird start to the season so far. In the first four games, we went 0-4, but in the next five, we went 5-0. and off. So we have gone on two significant streaks already, whether it be a losing streak or a winning streak. And we finished the month 6-5, and five. so it's... I, I don't know what to make of it just yet. It's definitely... It feels different than the start of last season, for sure. But... I'm not sure if that's a good sign or not, considering we ha- we started with that four-game losing streak. But then again, as of recent, we are on a pretty good tear. We only had one loss in the past uh, two weeks, it looks like. Ever since Vegas, we only had one loss against Philadelphia. Every other game was a win. It was definitely an interesting month, but we're not out of any kind of playoff race as of yet. We are currently third in the Metropolitan, so we'll take a look at all the points here. Darnell Nurse leads our team With nine points so far. So it looks like he was a good signing, at least at the moment. Taylor Hall with eight points, as does Bratt, Nico, and Hughes. They all have eight points as well. Lundell, so Lundell starting to pick it up scoring-wise. Bykov was seven. Fabro was seven. Carlson was six. Boak was with five. Prosper with four. Zaka with three. Bajan with three. Sissons with two. Slavin with two. Frolov and Benson with one, Lankow with nothing so far. And in net, Wingles with a 908 save percentage and Grubauer with a 902. So, interesting to note here, Wingles has gotten five of our wins. So, the majority of those losses fell on the shoulders of Grubauer. So, I think for right now, it's pretty obvious who we should start in net. And that would be Mr. Caleb Wingles. Now, I am interested to see the team stats here. Goals for per game, we are sitting at a 2.91. Goals against per game, we are sitting at a 2.73. Almost first in our division. And for the power play, oh boy. That needs to be <laughs> needs to be fixed. 12.5%. That is brutal. And a 778 on the penalty kill. So special teams could definitely be better. So since Grubauer and Wingles are both the same overall, the, the game's just kind of going to kind of switch them back and forth. So what I'm going to do for right now, I'll turn auto-rotate goalies off so that Caleb Wingles gets the majority of the starts. So one thing to note here is that Frolov is actually a minor top two defenseman. Before his role was a top six, but now that we have seen a month, the game has corrected itself. He's now a minor top two defenseman. So what we are going to do, we are going to send him to the AHL. We will get Severson back in there, which could definitely help out not only our power play, but our penalty kill as well. So we will, first of all, take out Fabro from the power play. I mean, unless he has some power. Well, actually... He does have seven points on the season. I'll leave him there right now because he has a lot of points. But I'm not sure what else we're going to switch because these are all of our best offensive players. So I think to start out, we can put Boquist with Hughes and Prospel, and then it'll be Hall, Heischer, and Bratt. See how those guys work together on the power play. Mix things up a little bit here. We'll get Bratt with Hughes and then Slavin and Carlson, and then Hall with Heischer, Boquist, and Fabro. And for the penalty kill, we could take Carlson off, and we could put Severson on. And look at that, look at that plus five there for the four-man penalty kill as we go back to that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is an absolute thing of beauty. So hopefully it stays like that, and hopefully we have better luck on the penalty kill. And one thing that we are going to do right now is we are going to send Andre Frolov back to the AHL. It's unfortunate that he is a minor top two defenseman still, but in order to get the best growth... He obviously has to be in the minors, so we will call up Xavier Bernard temporarily, as he will be our backup defenseman, and we are going to make sure that Frolov gets all the top minutes in the AHL, so we will do the best lines for the AHL there, and Frolov will more than likely be on every top line. Yep, he's on the power play, four-man power play, penalty kill, that looks good to me, and Wingles is in there full-time, starting right now. So obviously, Grubauer will still get some starts, but... It's mostly, I'd imagine, going to be Wangles this year, because so far he's done well, as far as the amount of wins he's gotten anyway. Guy Bajan has something to talk to us about. He says he is sorry for how he is playing. Well, you know, I I would love to know what his stats are, EA. I, I don't know how to <laughs> respond to him here. We haven't checked his stats recently, because this month is already almost over, so I, I have no idea how he's been playing. I'll just persuade him for right now. I, well, it is the end of November, and I already don't like the, where this is going. We are 10, 11, and 3. We went 4, 6, and 3 in that month, and 
We are currently sitting in fourth in the Metropolitan. Still not anywhere close to being out of the playoffs, but uh, we're really pushing it with, you know, losing more than we're winning. If you take away the OT losses there and tack them on to the losses total, we were 4-9 in that month. So I'm, I'm thinking we may just have to stop it here because we're... Something's not clicking about this team. I don't know if it's Marlowe. I don't know if it's some, that somebody needs to be traded. So goals against per game, 3.13, unfortunately, and the goals for per game, we're at 2.83. So we're actually scoring quite a bit, but we're getting scored on a lot. And the power play has not improved at all. <laughs> 9 for 72, that is unfortunate. And the penalty kill, it's improved a little bit, 79.2. So that's a bit odd, given that our goals against have gone up. Home, we are 5-6-1. and one. Away, we are 5-5-2. Five, five, and two. In our last 10, we are 2-5-3. and three. So we're going to take a look at the player stats and see what is going wrong here. So Hall and Hughes, each with 22 points. Hall with 16 goals so far. Bratt with 18. Nico with 17. Bokus with 16. Lundell with 11. Bykov with 11. Prospel with 7. Beijing with 7. Okay, so maybe that uh, <laughs> that conversation that he had with us earlier earlier was for good reason, because it looks like as he has been struggling, I just don't know how much he's been struggling, but it looks like he's definitely been struggling there on that second line. Zaka with five points, Sissons with four, Benson with two, and that is it for forwards. For defensemen, you have Carlson with 16 points, so he's getting it done still. Nurse with 11, Fabro with 11, so Nurse obviously slowed down as well after his hot start. I think he had what was it, nine points in the first month, or, yeah, I think it was nine points in the first month, and he had two points that month, that means Fabro with 11, S Slavin with six, Severson with two in 13 games, and Lankow only with one so far, that is all right, he's currently a top six defenseman, so we're going to leave him in the top six role, as long as he is getting NHL ice time, and hit-wise, you have Slavin with 48, Nurse with 39, Fabro with 35, Severson with 17 in 13 games, Lankow with 7, and Carlson with 5. And takeaways and giveaways, let's see, Nurse, that's good, Fabro could be a little bit better, Slavin really good, 8 to 11, Lankow 4 to 16, that's unfortunate, Carlson 3 to 25, that's also unfortunate, but he's, he's creating offense. And Severson 2 to 15. That is brutal. Ooh, that's brutal. So now four defensive stats. Let's see. Faceoffs. Zaka is a 57.9. So he's having a tremendous season on the faceoff circle. Hughes 56.3. Nico 54%. And Lundell 52.6. So once again, the same thing as last season. It's not a faceoffs issue. We we know that much because all of our main centers are winning them constantly. It looks like here, so it's certainly not for a lack of possession that we're losing the games that we are, you know. Physically, however, let's see, Beijing, Hughes, Hall, Bykov, Prospel, all over hit per game. However, Sissons at 20 hits, so I mean, that's, that's for a fourth liner, that's respectable for the uh, least amount of ice time that he gets, you know, only 721 of ice time. 20 hits in 24 games is not too shabby. Uh, 18 for Bratt, I mean, you don't really expect him to hit, but he's actually, he's hitting more than we even expect him to. He's almost hitting, I would say, at a .7 hits per game rate. I mean, he had 34 total last year, so he's doing well on that so far. Zaka with 17 hits, 14 for Nico. We don't really expect Nico to be physical at this point. I mean, he has been physical at times, like the last two years, but overall... He's not really there physically. So maybe the past couple of years were just, he just went crazy physically. <laughs> but uh, it appears this year he is back to the way he was a few years ago. But as long as he's doing his job offensively and defensively, I'm fine with that. And he is. He has 47 to 19 takeaways to giveaways. He is a beast in that respect. Jesper Bokvis with 12 hits. Lundell with 11. Benson with 8. Huh. I, I really expected more physically out of Benson, especially because he had 80 hits last season. I mean, he only had 33 hits the year before, but I believe that was... Oh, okay. I thought he was injured at some point. That might have been this season there with Edmonton. Or you know what? Actually, he wasn't even injured there with Edmonton. He just played in the AHL for the first part of the year, it must have been, and then was called up 20 games in. And for Colorado, yeah, I guess maybe he just had another one of those... 
seasons where he just went crazy physically. And now maybe he's back to his normal self, unfortunately. I mean, at least he's doing well defensively. Six to three takeaways to giveaways. But you still would like to see a lot more out of Benson physically. So now as we take a look at the takeaways to giveaways for every forward. Nico, Hughes, Lundell, Boquist. They're all doing great. Hall's actually unusually has more giveaways than takeaways. As we take a look at his past he normally has a lot more takeaways than he does giveaways, so this is definitely unusual for him. Baikov could be a little bit better, but otherwise not bad. Prospel could be better. Beijing could be better. So that's actually, that's surprising. Beijing, not only is he not producing offense, but he's not getting it done defensively either. He's, he's being physical for sure, but... He's he's kind of brutal defensively compared to where he normally is. You know, takeaways to giveaways, normally 73 to 34, and then 80 to 53 last year, now currently at 11 to 15. Although he does already have 16 blocks on the season compared to 17 in each of the past two seasons total. So, I mean, he's, he's doing well on the penalty kill, it looks like. But, you know, the takeaways to giveaway ratio is just a little concerning. Whenever I see a player that normally is really good defensively, drop off immediately like that, especially a young player. Don't like to see that. Bratt with a 9 to an 11, and then Zaka with a 6 to 14, unfortunately. Benson 6 to 3, Sissons 4 to 8. So we definitely have our issues with this team here as Wingles, unfortunately, with that 897 save percentage in 19 games. Based off the start, he looked like he was going to have a pretty solid season, but as of right now, he is, he must have fallen off big time in that month. I mean, we obviously went four, six, and three, but, oh, that's rough. Well, for one, it looks like we may have to turn automated goalie rotations back on. So we will do that right now. And secondly, we need to <laughs> figure this out because I don't know if we're going to be able to fire the coach again because that's just going to look bad. After, right after hiring Patrick Marlowe, we just fire him again. I don't know. Do we need to fire Patrick Marlowe? Just get a new coach again? Or, or, or do we just sell the farm? Do we just trade away everybody if it doesn't work out? Because, <laughs> you know, this is, this is the second coach we've been on in one year. And we're not having the greatest start to the season. Definitely not the start that we should be having. And I'm not sure whether to blame it on our goaltending or our lack of offense or both. It's, and to be honest, it's probably both. Given that, you know, guys like Beijing, only seven points. Well, I mean, Beijing's really the only guy on the top six who's struggling offensively. Given Nico has 17 points, Brat has 18, Hall has 16 goals, Hughes has 22 points, Boquist has 16 points. So Beijing's having some struggles there on the second line. Maybe we consider moving him down to the third. And who would you move up to that second line? Prospel, maybe? He has seven points. Lundell has 11. Baikov has 11. I do know that we can't have another month like we just did. <laughs> and I'm not having an, a repeat of last year. So, yeah, I'm going to end it off here. We are absolutely not having a year this year like we did last year. So, we need to figure this out. And I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think we need to do to get out of this rut? We're not far out of the playoffs right now, but uh, the way we're going, we definitely are on our way down. And we cannot afford another year of that. So let me know, and I will see you guys in the next one.